Hey friends, this is David from Default Sound, and today we're going to be talking about a few of the things you can do to make sure that your main stage concert is running as efficiently and using as little CPU as possible. Let's take a look. I'm going to talk about CPU usage a little bit. So I'm going to open up main stage here. And before I load a concert, just a couple things that you can do in the background to make sure you're not using resources that you don't really need. Um, always shut your Wi-Fi off, best practice. If you've got automatic backup turned on, shut that off. Don't have your backup hard drive connected when you're performing. Shut off everything that you do not need uh, in the background. Don't have any other apps open uh, unless you really need them to be open. Uh, I've got QuickTime open right now because that's what I'm using to shoot this video. But when I'm performing, everything else is shut down. Dropbox is closed. Uh, and Wi-Fi is off and all that stuff. All right, let's open up just this keyboard concert here. All right, let me hit record. So it opens up like this. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about CPU. Uh, there have been some, some videos shot by friends of mine, especially Jeff Meyer's uh, video that goes into a lot of depth about things that you can do to improve your CPU usage. But I just wanted to shoot something that's pretty quick uh, and just give a few things that you can avoid or look for to very quickly uh, make your concert as efficient as you can or at least boost its efficiency. So let's go to audio preferences first. So general preferences, uh, auto save, modified concerts, never. Best practice. Uh, audio settings here. Sample rate 44 or 48 hertz. You don't need to go any higher than that. You're really not going to notice the uh, audio increase in quality. It's just going to push your computer harder than you need to. Advanced settings. Driver latency all the way to the right. CPU usage all the way to the right. Best practice that I found. IO safety buffer I usually leave on. And the buffer size. This is where if you're having CPU dropouts, you want to increase your buffer size. Uh, if the latency is too high, meaning the delay between what you play on the keyboard and what you hear out of main stage, then you can decrease the buffer size. But the smaller your buffer size, the harder your computer is working. Usually 128 is okay. If you've got an older computer or you're running big concerts, you might have to go up to 256. Any higher than that in latency, I found it's pretty, uh, pretty unmanageable. So you've got to find ways to make your concerts work in this range here in my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Anyways, go into the, that advanced settings and make those changes and then hit apply changes before you close out if you need to make some changes. Okay, so up here at the top of your concert you've got this little CPU meter. If you double click on it, it opens up this little handy window and you'll see down here at the bottom it's got a list of everything that's open right now. Every plugin, every audio effect and it shows what percentage of your CPU it is using. Now Keep in mind, you've got a little bar here that shows percentage. 100% means you're using 100% of one core. So I have a f uh, four cores in my CPU. I've got a quad core CPU. So I could use up to 400% before I would potentially start to have major problems. Um, but you don't want to be pushing that high all the time. But just know if you hit 100, it doesn't necessarily mean your computer is going to catch on fire or that you are going to have audio dropouts. Uh, but you can see here, We've got some plugins open, we're not playing anything, and we're already using uh, almost 30% of CPU with random spikes. If I start to play, it begins to jump up. And obviously, if you add more layers, you're going to use more CPU. A couple things I just want to touch on really briefly. Uh, a lot, most of the main stage uh, concerts that come with the program use instances of Space Designer at the concert level. This one here, this keyboard concert, has three instances of Space Designer right there at the top. And as you can see in this CPU history, that Space Designer, the little yellow area, is taking up tons and tons of CPU. I really recommend not using Space Designer unless you absolutely need to. And then maybe if you do, put it on a concert level bus and then just run one instance of it. Jeff Myers actually covers that really well in his uh, video on aliases, buses, and CPU usage. So if you can get away with it, I recommend using a different reverb plugin 
Silver Verb is a great replacement. Platinum Verb is okay too, but I find that Silver Verb can get more of those tones. So if you're using one of the built-in concerts, just take that plugin out. It will cause, it'll save you so much CPU, your concert will be way more efficient. And then you can always replace it with something else. Um, so now that we've taken that out, you can see our CPU usage is way down, instantly down at like 5%, big change. Uh, the Amp Designer plugin that some of the uh, piano sounds and presets use is also pretty CPU hungry, but it sounds great, so uh, if, you, if you like it and you can afford to use it, go ahead. Um, you know, in general, just try to be as thrifty as you can, thicken stuff up. Uh, make as much with as few channel strips as you can. Uh, in regards to that, uh, some folks will have a, a billion patches or every patch they've ever created open in their concert at once. When you're just playing around at home, that can be fine or if you're putting together your concert. But when you're getting ready to perform, I usually just create a duplicate of the concert or create a concert saved as the name of the date that I'm playing on or whatever and just load the patches that you know you're going to need. Um, the more patches you have open, the more resources you're going to be taking. So less is more. If you're playing a four-song set and you're using four patches, just load those four patches up and keep everything else closed. That'll make your concert more efficient. Um, I usually perform in perform mode. Some folks have reported that the edit mode is actually a little less CPU hungry. Uh, I haven't noticed a huge difference. Um, but you can try it out both ways and see what works better for you if you're really having issues. Some folks have also said that smart layout controls are a little CPU hungry, especially when you're making patch changes because it has to load a new graphic on screen. I found that I don't really need smart controls. I can just create a regular layout in the layout window and get all the features that I need. Um, something to try out if you're having issues and you do use smart controls in your current layout. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about briefly is uh, if you've got multiple layers open in a patch, um, and then you're not using them all the time, say you've got the faders mapped to on-screen faders. Uh, if the fader's all the way down, you're still using just as much CPU. I'll open this up. You can see that ePiano, even though it's all the way down, it's still using just as much CPU. So you'd think if you mute it, that would change, but that's not true, actually. Muted plugins take just as much CPU as ones that are turned all the way up. So there's a, there's a way to fix this, and it's just bypassing the plugin. So if you hit bypass on the piano and then play, it's not using any CPU anymore. The only thing left is multimeter and channel EQ. Oh, and real quick while I'm thinking about it, the multimeter plugin takes up a bunch of CPU too and it doesn't really provide any benefit for you. So I always take that off of my plugin or off of my concerts. I never use it in mine. Um, anyway, so bypassing a, uh, a plugin is the best way to keep it from burning CPU. So you can either add some buttons on your screen and map them to bypass uh, or you can actually map uh, an on-screen fader to automatically bypass a plugin when that fader is all the way down. I've got a video that I'll link to in uh, the notes for this video with uh, a tutorial on how to set up automatic plugin bypass on a knob or fader. That's the technique that I prefer to use because then you don't have to think about it. If you want to bring the instrument up, just move the fader up and it automatically turns that plug-in back on. And you can add multiple mappings to the same fader. You could have the whole channel strip, all effects on that knob. I have noticed a little bit sometimes when you'll turn a plug-in back on off of bypass, there will be a little bit of a CPU spike. Um, so if you have a huge uh, patch with a ton of channel strips, you might not want to put all of them on automatic bypass because then you could get a big CPU uh, jump when you turn that fader back up and that could cause uh, an audio glitch as well. All right, well, that's just a little bit uh, on CPU usage. There are so many other things that we could discuss, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments. I'm also going to go ahead and link to Jeff Meyer's more in-depth video because I found it very helpful when I was starting out, and he goes into some depth um, that I didn't cover here today. But I wanted to just put together something short and sweet uh, to kind of cover some of the introductory bases um, and give you a head start in making your concerts more efficient. All right, those are a few things that you can try. If you're still having trouble or if you'd like some more in-depth help, you can send us an email, info at defaultsound.com, or feel free to leave a comment on this video. If you like this video, I hope that you'll like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for main stage patches and other worship resources, head over to defaultsound.com. We really appreciate that support.
Thanks for watching and have a great day.